Hey everyone, Itai Manero here, and welcome to the third week of Brushtober 2021, an October event where I create a Procreate set with 31 brushes that is going to be entirely free for all my customers. If you want to know how you can get it, check out the info in the description below, or watch the first video in this series for all the details. In this video, we're going to have a look at the 7 brushes and illustrations I created this week, so let's jump right into it. For day 10, I came up with this fun stippling brush. I think stippling is amazing and I actually have a whole set dedicated to it. The cool thing about Brushtober is that I get the chance to experiment and get crazier with the brushes than I normally would, because I'm not constrained to any specific requirements with this brush set. I call this brush, Stippling Madness. This is a brush that you probably wouldn't use alone by itself you would most likely want to use other brushes first to make your line art or main shapes, and then use this one to add this really awesome texture and also use it for blending with the smudge tool. But as I mentioned last week, with these illustrations for Brushtober I'm limiting myself to use only the brush I made for that day. I felt limited by only using this specific brush, but sometimes it is actually really fun to work within some limitations, and something interesting can come out of it. This is just a little doodle to test this brush, but I indeed had a lot of fun with it. For day 11, I worked on this new pencil brush that I have to say it ended up being my most favorite pencil brush I've ever made so far, and I'll go into details of why in a moment. The nice thing about this brush is that you can use low pressure to get really thin lines, but also press harder to make the stroke thicker. You can also tilt the Apple Pencil and get this texture similar to when the tip of a real pencil breaks, which I think it can be very interesting for shading. I call this brush, Tilt Break Pencil. When I was doing this sketch I was thinking, okay, this just looks like a regular pencil so far, but the most interesting part came when I was starting to define the final lines, using black instead of that nice red color I used for the underdrawing. When I switched to black, the actual brush behavior started to reveal to me. The lines felt extremely organic. If you press lightly, you get this typical pencil texture in the thin lines. But if you press harder, the material of the pencil starts to feel more wet, like the oils of a greasy pencil sliding on the paper. Tilting the Apple Pencil to add some shading as you go is also a gesture that once you get used to doing it, it comes out very naturally. After a little while, I almost forgot that I was drawing in a digital app, instead of with traditional media, and I think that is the coolest thing that it can happen when using digital brushes. For day 12, I really got experimental. I made this brush called Endless Waters. It has this incredible texture that simulates a flowing liquid that seems to keep going endlessly and mixes with itself very naturally. While I was creating this brush I was already coming up with ideas on what could this brush be good for and I have the perfect example to show you right here. If you have ever tried to paint some marbles, you must know how hard it is to get right all the reflections, lights and shapes that are so frequently found in these little balls. This brush is absolutely awesome for that. The cool thing is that you can still lower the size of this brush to be able to block in any shapes you need more accurately, and then paint inside those shapes by locking the alpha in the layer. With a combination of the paint tool for adding color and texture, and the smudge tool for blending and bleeding the colors into each other, I found it super fun and easy to achieve the reflections and shapes inside this big marble. Once I had the big one finished, I could then create three more marbles in a smaller size, and make each one different from the others. 
by doing different interior designs in the marbles and playing with different color shiftings. I could add a lot of variety to this illustration, especially when I started duplicating the marbles and spreading them through the space, to make it seem that they are all floating in the air around the main marble. For day 13, I was in the mood for some painterly stuff, so I worked on this brush that has a very interesting stroke quality. It looks a little bit like a bunch of lines that follow your stroke, but they are very close together, and each one has a different opacity level in the middle area, while keeping the edges always dark. You can also mix colors with this brush using the smudge tool. I call this brush, Linear Path. For this illustration, I found this beautiful photo reference by Emily Sevenox. What I like the most about this brush is how effortless you can get a lot of color variation when building up the strokes, generating a lot of texture at the same time. For some reason this brush made me feel inspired to be more thoughtful in the way I was putting down each stroke, thinking carefully on the shape each stroke had, and how it was contributing to the whole image. I also found very interesting to place a stroke and use the eraser tool with the same brush to sculpt into the shape of the stroke, using the smudge tool to blend away some of the areas, especially in the water areas, felt amazing and it really added to the painterly style I was looking for. I absolutely enjoyed the painting process with this brush. For day 14, I wanted to make a new inking brush that had a digital look, but with a slight touch of traditional by giving it interesting edges. It has a nice pressure sensitivity built in, so that you can control easily the line weight in a single stroke. I call this brush, Wormy Inker. I had this cool idea of drawing a crystal jar like the ones you could have in your house for decoration purposes, maybe with some stones and plants inside. But the twist is that I wanted to draw a small medieval citadel with a castle inside. I also thought it would be cool to add clouds inside the jar, like if the top part was the sky inside this little world. I played with thick and bold lines, especially for the outlines of each object, and then I worked with thinner lines to add the smaller and more refined details. I also added some manual vertical hatching that I think it helps to define this style I was coming up with. I wasn't exactly thinking of coloring it, but I decided to add some color to see how it looked, and I ended up liking it. But the nice surprise came to me when I used the smudge tool with this very same brush to blend the colors. I wasn't expecting how good this brush is for blending, it almost feels like a nice watercolor or ink wash that totally worked for me. For day 15 I wanted to experiment with a more graphic style. The shape of this brush is made of different circles and marks that I found very interesting and playful. You can lower the size of the brush to get this bleeding line work, or use it with the smudge tool to blend. I call this brush, graphic circles. Since we are halfway in the road to Halloween, I felt the urge to paint a scary pumpkin. I used this phenomenal photo reference by David Menedry. First I used the brush in a small size to block in the shape of the pumpkin and also the carvings for the face. Once I had that, my painting method was to add flat colors first with the paint tool, and then blend them away with the smudge tool. Obviously the point is not to blend everything away, but to blend some areas and leave others more sharp. This way you can easily define the volumes while keeping nice edges where you need to. Having the shape of the pumpkin and the shape for the facial features in separate layers made it super easy to paint in each part without worrying to paint in the wrong place. This way I could work on the light that comes from the inside of the pumpkin that we can see through its eyes, nose and mouth. I duplicated the pumpkin layer, I flipped it vertically and moved it down. Then I worked with a combination of brush strokes along with some vertical motion blur to achieve the look that this is a reflection on a glossy surface and I think it really worked out. 
For the final touch I tap gently to create this orange shape to make a nice comic bubble. And I used the same brush in a smaller size to write some letters. I thought this was the most appropriate thing a scary pumpkin would say in Halloween. Lastly, for day 16, I wanted to play with color dynamics, so I made this brush that also can be used for a very painterly style, with nice edges, amazing texture and blending control. Each stroke adds a slight color variation that is very subtle, but I think it can be very interesting. I call this brush, Dense Dust. For this final illustration I wanted to paint an eye, so I looked up for tons of references, but I didn't use any in particular. I was mostly looking for the general information I needed about the shape and colors for the eye and its surroundings. First I did a basic sketch, and then I started to paint right away. I find that a brush like this, that generates automatic but very subtle color variations, can be very useful when painting human skin. The amount of color variations you can find in the skin is amazing, and also very difficult to get right, so I felt this brush was almost doing the hardest part for me. I really loved how naturally the strokes blend with each other with this brush, even without having to use the smudge tool, just by painting with it. Of course, grabbing the smudge tool from time to time doesn't hurt. You probably are wondering why am I painting the white part of the eye so dark and grey, and the answer is that in real life, eyes almost never look pure white. You can check it out by opening any photo of a person in Procreate, or in any painting app and place the color drop in the white of the eyes, you will be surprised of how dark the color you'll pick up would be compared to what you thought it would be. When painting eyes, it's always good to start from a mid value and then you can slowly build up the light and reflections until you get it right. By not painting with white right away, you can save the purest white for the final reflections and highlights, which is going to make your eyes look wet and very realistic. As a final idea, I decided to make the bottom part of this illustration like if this eye was painted on a surface and it was dropping its pigments, giving this weird but cool effect similar to tears. And that's it for today. These are the 7 brushes I did this week for my Brushtober Challenge 2021. Let me know in the comments which of these brushes was your favorite so far. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video, and give me a thumbs up. Also make sure to check out my Gumroad page, and consider purchasing something before the end of October to get this unique brush set for free. I have tons of Procreate brush sets available, and I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.